Hi friends, today we will discuss an important topic called philosophy of Sant Tukaram. So you get a doubt, how come this Sant Tukaram philosophy is an important thing and is it really an important current issue? The point is, if you observe the prelims 2022, Prime Minister has visited some religious places and the questions with respect to that was appeared in prelims. So the point is, you cannot learn the philosophy of every philosopher in this country. Perhaps that is not possible and even in history also you do not get an opportunity to get into the details of the philosophy of each and every saint. But at least those who are in the news, if you are able to have some idea, then certainly we can expect a question and we can write the answer. Even prior to that also UPSC is having a habit of asking the philosophy of some of the Bhakti saints because it was already asked. So it was already is in news and also these type of questions were already asked in UPSC. So that is the reason why today we will discuss the philosophy of Sant Tukaram. So this is the importance of that. So with this introduction and here I may explain only the philosophy of some saints who are in news. And you must follow the same trend like whoever is in news, like any saint or any bhakti saint or any important person who is having some historical and cultural philosophical significance, please try to read some philosophical things regarding that person because that is very very important because this is a new trend that UPSC is following. And you must also have an idea of our Indian philosophy and some of the Indian philosophers. We learned to some extent in history, but we just read it as a matter of fact. We do not getting into the details. Okay? So you need to getting into the details. You must have some information to write the answer and you must have some information to understand and to keep it in your mind because you may put into practice also. Okay, so Sant Tukaram, why it was news, why it was in news? Because recently Prime Minister inaugurated a Shila temple or rock temple at Sant Tukaram Maharaj temple near Pune. Exactly the village name is Dehu. Dehu. So he was inaugurated a rock temple or a Shila temple at a place called Dehu near to this Sant Tukaram Maharaj temple. See, this Sant Tukaram Maharaj, he is not a Maharaj, he is a Bhakti saint and he belongs to 17th century. 17th century. And he born in the village Dehu, it is near Pune. Near Pune. And he belongs to this Bhakti Parampara. That means, the Bhakti movement was starts with Ramanuja. And some people trace that origin of bhakti movement to the Adi Shankaracharya also. And in that parampara, Sant Tukaram was one. Bhakti means it is not something like a Brahmanical practice. Like earlier we used to have lot of rituals, sacrifices, rites. But under this bhakti, you have a direct connection with the God and you just surrender yourselves to the God so that you will get moksha. That is what bhakti. Now, this Sant Tukaram, he belongs to a particular sampradaya called Varkari Sampradaya. Varkari Sampradaya. You can use V also instead of W. So, Varkari Sampradaya. So, Varkari Sampradaya is a Marathi Vaishnav tradition because the Vishnu have different forms and the people will worship the Vishnu in different forms, Narayan. And Marathi people worship the Vishnu or Narayan in the form of Vithoba or Vithala or Panduranga. And the people who follow this tradition, 
who worship this Vishnu as Panduranga, Vithala, Vithala or Vithoba, we call it as Varkaris. So, the Varkaris is a tradition that is following in the state of Maharashtra and they follow Panduranga. And this Sant Tukaram belongs to this Varkari tradition or Varkari Sampradaya. And his Guru, Tukaram Guru is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was also a Bhakti Saint and a question was asked with respect to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in UPSC mains in 2018. It was a 15 mark question. So, that means you must have that much of content with you to write the answer. But anyhow, the Guru of Sant Tukaram is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has inspired Tukaram to enter into this bhakti path and along with this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu there are some other bhakti saints who influence the Tukaram and those people they are also belongs to the same bhakti tradition it is Namdev, Namdev, Jnaneshwar, Namdev, Jnaneshwar, Eknath, Kabir, Kabir, Eknath because he repeatedly mentioned these four names in his literature. I will come to that lit literature a little bit late. So, perhaps these four might have influenced, influenced Sant Tukaram. Okay. Now, I will come to the writings of Sant Tukaram. Writings. He has written a lot of poetry and that poetry we call it as Abhang. Abhang, Abhangas, plural we call it as Abhangas, single one is Abhang. Abhang means indestructible, non-ending, indestructible, non-ending. Likewise, he composed around 5000 Abhangas, 5000 Abhangas to reside Vithala or Vithoba or Pandaranga. And this Santu Tukaram is also having, a, is also called with a different names like Tuka, Tukoba, just have an idea, Tuka and Tukoba. So, these Abhangas, they were written in Marathi. This all poetry was in Marathi and it is with a Marathi general literature and it is simple, it is so direct and it fuses some folk stories, folk stories. So, it is fused with some folk stories and with some deeper spiritual themes. It is not a simple folk. In order to make it understand to the people, he added some folk things into this Avangas with a deeper spiritual themes. And that too, we call this Sant Tukaram as a saint of masses. Saint of masses. That means, the masses can identify, the masses can understand, the masses can own Tukaram and Tukaram's teachings. And his teachings are grand, they are straight and they are simple. They are simple, they are straight, but they are, they are grand. And it's very easy to understand. Fuse some folk stories into that, but with deeper spiritual themes. And it was written in Marathi. They are direct. People can understand easily. And this is one part of his writing called Abhangas. And there is a second part called Kirtans. So, this Kirtans probably he might have get it from his Guru Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also followed this Kirtan tradition. So, Kirtan in the sense it is a community oriented group singing and dancing. It is a form of Bhakti. Individually, you can worship God. Individually, you can surrender with the God. But as a group, by singing the songs and dancing, and you can surrender yourselves to the God. It is also a form of bhakti. And this bhakti plus spirituality, both were there in the kirtans. It's not a simple songs. Okay? Both devotion and spirituality, both were there in this kirtan. And he also followed this kirtan. So, Abhangas and Kirtans both were his important literary work. Now, I will come to some of the important events. 
important events in the life of Sant Tukaram are important because we must know that events and at the same time you may get a question also. I will explain how you will get that question. The first important, there are only two important events. The first important event is in search of truth, in search of truth, in order to know what is truth, the such, the Sant Tukaram has spent 15 days on Bhamnath mountain, Bhamnath mountain and on this mountain he was like a wanderer for 15 days in order to get the truth and after 15 days like how Buddha got enlightenment he also came to know about the truth and this temple name is sorry this mountain name is important because sometimes you may get saints on one side and you may get the places which are related to with that particular saint will be given on other side they may ask you to match the following okay anyhow Bahamnath mountain is the first that is in search of his truth the second important aspect is it is with respect to authenticity of his abhangas basically this Tukaram belong to a Sudra community and you can understand who is Sudra and he got the essence of this Vedas. He came to know what is truth. And he wanted to teach the truth, the essence of Vedas to the common man irrespective of their caste. Because in view of God, everyone is same. And that is why he started teaching. And when he started teaching, and the Sudra people and other, when they start reciting, when they start understanding the essence of Vedas, then the question comes, like the Brahmin at that point of time, it was a Brahmin dominant and the Brahmins came and they asked, why you are teaching all these things? It is something wrong what you are teaching. He said, I am just an instrument, it is the one God who ordered me to teach this. I am just an instrument, it is the God who has ordered me. Then they said, if really God has such a blessings with you, if really you have that divine order and if you really have that Vithoba's wish, then immerse all your Abhangas into this Indrayani river and if really the divine's order is there, it will come back again. Then in order to prove the veracity of the writings what he has written, the Abhangas, he immersed in the Indrayani river. Indrayani river Indrayani river I'll come to this Indrayani river Indrayani river important river name and once he immersed this Abhangas in Indrayani river he sat on a rock for 13 days for 13 days after 13 days after 13 days the work miraculously reappeared that means on the same waters whatever the Abhangas that he has immersed they have reappeared that has proven the authenticity of the Abhangas and the God grace. This rock where exactly the temple has constructed now. The rock temple, this was inaugurated by the Prime Minister. And this Indrayani river, it is in the Maharashtra. It originated in the Sahyadri mountain range and it joins with the river Bhima. Bhima is again a tributary to river Krishna. Indrayani, Bhima, starts in Sahyadri ranges and this Bhima is a tributary to river Krishna. So just have an idea about these aspects. Okay. Next. Now I will come to the very important aspect of the Sant Tukaram's philosophy. So the philosophy of Sant Tukaram is very very important because you may get a question in mains. The teachings and philosophy. So I am dividing this entire teachings and philosophy into five aspects and I will explain under that. The first one is Bhakti Mark. First one is the mark which has shown is Bhakti. So as I already told, Bhakti Mark means you need to denounce the rites, rituals, sacrifices. And you should be a God loving person. You should have a relation with the God. You must surrender yourself with the God. You must recite the God and complete surrenderance to the God. Make God as a make God as a central to your life. Your life is completely revolving around the God and reciting God's name in whatever the work that you are doing. 
and either it is in the form of poetry or it is in the form of normal recitation or it is in the form of kirtana anything so that surrender ends to the god that sharanagati is very very important under this bhakti mark you no need to follow any conventional rituals that's not necessary under bhakti and he also did the same thing he made a direct connection with the god you no need any intermediary you no need any person like a brahmin and you don't need any person like a priest so it's not necessary it's not necessary so that is what bhakti mark that's what he preached second one is it is related to his vedantic philosophy vedantic philosophy see the entire bhakti literature has its own roots in this vedantas or upanishads because it was started from the badrayana and later shankaracharya and after that bhagavat ramanujacharya so from there that means this entire tradition of bhakti has its own roots in this vedantic philosophy and in this vedantic philosophy sant tukaram said you need to understand the self first who are you and from where you are and what is the relation between you and god and why you are here so that means understanding the self is very very important and he was always tukaram was always in a constant struggle with himself that means he used to struggle inside who am i why i am here from where i am so this internal struggle is also to understand the self is a part of vedic philosophy and that is what he preached and the universe is filled with the god everywhere god is there so that is also another important thing that sant tukaram has preached so that is vedantic and i have already made a video on this philosophy of bhagavat ramanujacharya in that you can understand what is this concept of self and relation between self and god and what is this universe is filling with the god so i don't want to explain this vedantic uh, point here it was already explained in another video please watch it next he talked about great virtues great virtues because these virtues are important for everyone these virtues are important for everyone to get the moksha and some of the virtues he said like truth so you must speak truth always compassion humility humility and humbleness 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 so truth you must have a compassion towards your fellow beings and humility and humbleness even he used to quote an example even he used to quote an example like when a river is flooding mighty trees will wash away but a little grass will stay like that that means if you are humble anything comes it won't affect you so that is what the essence so this humility and humbleness is an important virtue that uh, the saint has preached next the next important aspect is with respect to social reform and all the bhakti saints are social reformers i can say all the bhakti saints are social reformers and he also tried to reform the society because at that point of time society was no completely devoid of the knowledge they did not understand what their exact ancestry and how we should behave oneself with other and how should maintain a relations with the god we are divided completely and he tried to change that society that societal system and uh, most of the times at that point of time the society was completely divided among the caste lines even there is a gender discrimination economic discrimination so that is the reason why he preach for equality so equality is one of the most important aspect of all the bhakti saints because equality at that point of time was very difficult and that to irrespective of caste so to whichever caste you belong to you are equal 
in the views of God because the God has created everyone and God is there in everyone. So that is what the equality and untouchability. So untouchability, untouchability should not be there. And even gender discrimination, this is very important. Gender discrimination and even some of the disciples, the main disciples of this saint were women. Were women because at that point of time, women were not allowed to attend these religious teachings and they are not supposed to recite some important religious text. But Tukaram said like, no, I don't follow any gender discrimination and he accepted some women as a main disciples also. So this is the social reform work that was done by the Sant Tukaram. <coughs> Next, fifth one is pilgrimage. So pilgrimage. So pilgrimage is an important component of the bhakti, the bhakti teachings of Tukaram. Because some people believed in like if you just make a connection with the God and if you recite that's okay. But Tukaram said like you need to take a pilgrimage ev every year. So that pilgrimage is an important part and parcel of bhakti movement. And he himself, he himself has taken a pilgrimage from this Dehu to this Panduranga temple and we call that annual pilgrimage as Vari. W A R I Vari. So this Vari Vari is an annual pilgrimage to the Panduranga temple or Vithala temple or Vitoba temple. Vithala temple or Vitoba temple. The starting point is Dehu. So that is the birthplace of this Saint Tukaram. So these are the five important aspects of teachings of the Lord Tukaram. So be careful, have an idea, just divide it into this and make an answer instead of writing in a single uh, no, paragraph. Next, and lot of people influenced with the ideas of Bhakti saints and especially the Saint Tukaram also. And lot of freedom fighters like Mahatma Gandhi and others were also influenced from his teachings and they themselves has quoted the teachings of this Sant many times and he was contemporary to contemporary to Chhatrapati Shivaji that is one important fact that you need to remember he is contemporary to Chhatrapati Shivaji and Chhatrapati Shivaji has made lot of send lot of gifts to the Tukaram but Tukaram he was already in the path of this Bhakti and in spirit of renunciation he has not accepted that then Shivaji paid Shivaji made a visit to Sant Tukaram and that is how the relations was there the relation was there between Tukaram and as well as Chhatrapati Shivaji. So this is about some philosophy of the Sant Tukaram. There are some important preliminary bits are there and some important main aspect is also there. So just have an idea. This is important. You may get a question. You may get a question on this issue. Okay. Thank you. Amrita IAS Academy.